The search is on this morning for thousands of planets beyond our solar system. Next week, NASA is launching something they call the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. And joining us now, we're thrilled to have NASA scientist Dr. Joshua Schleider. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Hello. Thank you. Hey, thanks for joining us. Let's let's dive in right here. I, I'm curious, what is an exoplanet? Let's start with that. And also, why is it important? Why are you guys spending all this effort uh, trying to find them? Sure thing. So an exoplanet is a planet that orbits a star outside of our solar system. So the Earth, where we live, and the other planets in our solar system orbit the sun, which is a star. And if we consider the other stars in the sky and in the galaxy at large, the planets that orbit those stars we call exoplanets. And NASA's new test mission is going to build on the knowledge that we have over the last 20 years of studying and discovering exoplanets by observing all of the brightest and closest stars in the sky and trying to find the best targets for future follow-up. Now, people have always kind of been fascinated with the possibility of life out there, life on other planets. How is this new mission mm -hmm. going to give us actually a better look than we've ever had before into the possibility of that? So TESS will do this uh, by using something called the transit method, where it essentially monitors the brightness of thousands of stars at, at one time. And it looks for very small changes in the brightness of the star as a planet crosses in front from our point of view. And in doing this, we can measure the size of the planet, and we can measure how far it is from its host star, and whether or not it orbits in what we call the habitable zone, which is a region where it would not be too hot or too cold and could potentially support liquid water. And these planets could then be observed by the upcoming James Webb Space Telescope or the current Hubble Space Telescope to try to find out if their atmospheres contain the ingredients that we think are necessary to support life. That's interesting stuff how you guys do that. And you touched on it a moment ago. Tell me how long this is going to be in orbit, first of all, and then what you just said, the James mm -hmm. Webb Space Telescope launching in, I think, 2020. How are these going to work in conjunction with each other? That's correct. Yeah, so TESS is going to be in orbit around the Earth in, a, in an elliptical orbit that will take it sort of far out toward the orbit of the moon and then have it swing back in and dump the data after it's done observing on that two-week orbit. Um, and it will work in tandem with James Webb, which is launching in 2020, by finding the best targets for James Webb to point its large aperture at those stars and do very detailed studies of these exoplanets. And as I said, to try to understand what are their atmospheres made of. And is the James Webb Telescope in 2020, is that sort of the next generation of the Hubble that we all know and love, or is this something sort of different? So yeah, it, it is sort of the follow-on to Hubble, but unlike Hubble, uh, which observes at wavelengths that the human eye is sensitive to, the James Webb Telescope will be observing at longer wavelengths um, where we're more sensitive uh, to, these, to these fainter um, stars and planets. Okay, TESS launches next Monday. Of course, all dependent on the weather. Dr. James, uh, Dr. Joshua, rather, Schleider, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you very much. It's been great.